you're just one rusted bolt away from the job taking you a couple extra days. Well, hello my friends, Kevin here, and thanks for watching this video in our Bottom Line series where we focus on everything about custom lower trucks. And before we get started, I wanna ask everybody to like this video and also subscribe to this channel as it helps us produce more videos in the future. All right, with that out of the way, let's continue on with our video and the subject of uh, the costs and the different ways to lower a truck. Now, let's say you just picked up a truck or you've had one and you've never lowered one before and you wanna do so, but you're kind of confused because there's so many different ways to go. Some people may tell you that you can drop a truck for a couple hundred bucks or uh, maybe you should splurge and uh, go with something more complex like a coilover system. Uh, which is gonna cost a lot more, substantially a lot more, or maybe something custom or whatnot or what have you. But I will tell you that there's no one solution for everybody. Uh, everybody has their own different needs as well as their own separate budgets. So to help you navigate through all of this stuff, I'm gonna break all the different ways down for you. Before we get any further, I wanna make it clear that classic trucks are definitely harder to lower than newer trucks with the more modern suspension systems that work really well from the factory. And when you uh, lower them a bit, you're just basically gonna uh, add a few parts and uh, get them down a little bit. And it's not really gonna affect the way they drive too much. And if you wanna find out more about cheap and free ways to lower these trucks, check out a previous video. And we'll drop the link to that in the description below. But getting back to classic trucks, the reason why they're more difficult is uh, for a few reasons. Uh, th there may be some corrosion or something like that uh, that may be harder to work on, or the engineering on these suspension systems is just not up to par with what we expect these days and that drive quality. So when you lower these trucks, you're also gonna look at improving the quality of the way they drive as well. Now for those that are on a tighter budget or maybe you wanna go a simple approach, uh, you're gonna look at getting a static drop bolt-on suspension system. And this would include things like uh, drop spindles, uh, coil springs, uh, maybe a rear flip kit and shocks, which is definitely a must. If you're dramatically changing the height of your truck, uh, your factory shocks will bottom out. So you wanna change that because it'll give you bad ride quality and uh, just make sure you get new shocks. It's just, uh, you're gonna be happy with it in the end. And all these parts combined usually cost about $1,000 to $1,500, depending on your truck and what exactly you get. So uh, yeah, it doesn't cost too much. You can do it in your driveway or your garage, but uh, if you don't have the know-how or don't wanna do it yourself, you can look to a shop. I talked to my buddy, Jason Bowman of uh, Big Ten Garage, and he said a job like that will cost about $3,500 in labor. Now do mind you, he is on a little bit of a higher end, but uh, there's reasons for it because he said that he'll go through things like the uh, steering system or the uh, ball joints. He'll replace things like that uh, if he sees that they're bad. And uh, overall, he's just give you the best quality ride that you're gonna wanna get out of your truck. Um, but that's not the direction for everybody. You can go to different shops. You know, Maybe you're not gonna get the exact same quality, but it can be done for a couple hundred grand. Uh, but yeah, or you can do it in your garage or your driveway yourself. Uh, but do keep in mind that um, it can be a quite difficult on these uh, old trucks. What can really add to the difficulty on classic trucks is that uh, there may be some corrosion, uh, rust, or stuff like that. I've definitely been there too. I've had a truck where I just couldn't get the ball joints off. It took me a while with a pickle fork and a hammer. I just had to bang away at it. And it took me, uh, I think, a couple hours to break it loose. Uh, I had other issues one time as well with uh, rust and uh, rusted parts or basically, I had a grinder in my hand and I was like, okay, this easiest way is just to cut everything out. So think about that when you're working on some of these older trucks that uh, you're just one rusted bolt away from the job taking you a couple extra days. Now, many companies like QA1, TCI and RideTech have quality systems for trucks, but they do cost a bit more. I am familiar with the RideTech system and can tell you it's over $6,000 for the parts and everything, but there's a lot included in all of that including the coilovers and pretty much a whole new suspension system for your truck. I've installed one on a truck, on a C10 specifically, in a driveway, and uh, it took a good amount of time. It took about a week uh, to get everything done, but this is me, I didn't really have any tips on anything, didn't, you know, didn't have any experience with it. So just going off the instructions, that's how long it took to make sure that everything was done right. I know when it came to the back, I ended up taking the bed off because it was just easier to get to the, all those rear components that way. And then I could tell you also, getting the rear suspension off, we had to uh, grind off a whole bunch of rivets in order to get, it, uh, get that frame clean so that we can add the suspension to it. Now, if you don't wanna handle the install yourself, maybe you just don't trust your skill set and wanna look to having a professional install everything, it is gonna cost quite a bit. Referring back to my friend, Jason, 
He said that uh, installing a ride tech kit will cost about $10,000. Now that does include the parts and the labor, which will take a few days to get you going. And it does sound like a lot, but when you uh, think about classic trucks and uh, adding these suspension systems really improves everything. It also increases the value. So really it's worth it in the end if you want to spend that much. To be honest, you're only going to get so far uh, with a bolt-on system. And if you want the ultimate in performance and handling, you're going to want to scrap your whole entire chassis and go with something new. Now, companies like TCI, Art Morrison, and Roadster Shop all create and sell full complete chassis systems, which include your frame, suspension, uh, probably your steering, brakes, and a rear end, everything to get you going to have your truck ride like a brand new vehicle. All of this does come at an added expense, and you can expect to pay at least $15,000 for a basic system. Now, that doesn't include everything you need. Uh, if you want a complete chassis system, it's gonna be at least $25,000 to $30,000 for everything to, uh, you need to uh, have your truck ride like a brand new vehicle and all of that. Now, for me, uh, on my 62 GMC that I have behind me, I already went the route of having bolt-on stuff and it did get some results. The truck did get low, but when I go over things like uh, railroad tracks and hit some bumps, it feels like a bucket of bolts and I wanted to change all of that. So I decided to invest in a full chassis from TCI. Now I did get the chance to stop by TCI the other day as they told me they got started on my chassis. And I can tell you, there is a lot of work involved. These guys create the frame rails in-house. Then they make the, uh, all the cross members and put everything together. They weld it up, put the suspension together. All of that stuff takes a lot of effort and I can see why it costs so much. There are quite a few differences between this new chassis and the original equipment that's on my 62 as it stands. If we look at the front suspension, you'll see that um, the steering is the old linkage style, which gets a lot of play over time. Now I did convert from uh, drum brakes to disc brakes, but they only got me so far. I tell you, with uh, the equipment under the hood, this truck is pretty fast. And when I get to freeway speeds and slowing down um, in a short distance is pretty difficult. I got to work those brakes and uh, it's, it's kind of difficult, a little bit sketchy. So having bigger brakes on the new chassis is definitely going to be an improvement. Also, the uh, old suspension is a torsion bar setup, which works okay. But really to get the best results, the new chassis has an independent style front suspension with coilovers, which really allows me to tune everything. So that'll be a vast improvement from the original equipment. Now, if we go in the back, I did uh, put in a different rear end from the original factory equipment. And it does have a uh, trailing arm setup, which is basically a two link, but that's only gonna get me so, uh, so much results. The new equipment has a brand new linkage system and also has a torque arm because that chassis is called a pro touring uh, chassis and it was designed for racing. I'm not planning to go racing, but I really wanted the performance. So I ended up getting that chassis system. Of course, if you're changing your suspension system, you're gonna wanna look at getting new wheels. Uh, let's say you get some off the shelf wheels and uh, want to get some sticky nitto tires. It's going to cost you about $1,500, which isn't too bad. So depending on uh, how far you go, you know, this is an added little cost into everything. When swapping complete chassis systems, there's numerous parts to consider that are going to add cost to it, like a new exhaust system, which will cost you a few thousand dollars. A new drive shaft at a minimum is like around 600 bucks. Uh, wiring's going to cost you a few thousand dollars, as well as a new fuel system, because you need all that stuff to work on a new chassis system. So it's easy to see how things add up really quick with the new chassis. Now also labor, going back to my friend Jason, he said that uh, doing a swap is gonna cost about $50,000 in labor. So yeah, it's easy to see how this uh, racks up a bit. So even creating a patina truck that's not painted with a new chassis system could cost you $100,000. And that's a lot of money. So maybe it's not worth it to everybody. So you have to consider what you're looking at and uh, what your budget is, in which direction you're gonna go, and how to lower your truck. Well, my friends, that just about does it for this video, and it's time for me to sign off. Before I go, I wanna ask everybody to uh, like this video as it helps us produce more in the future. If you have anything to say about this topic, please drop that stuff in the comment section below. Also, make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a future video, and we will catch you next time.
Thanks for watching Driving Line. If you guys like this video, consider subscribing to our channel so you'll never miss any of the content we create here. Whether you're into trucks, Jeeps, imports, domestic vehicles, or anything in between, we are here to fuel your passion. So hit that subscribe button and we'll see you guys next time.